apparently and then I got in and then they were like I'm sorry you're not in this car it's very important that you order things that you don't know exactly what they are if you're trying to be a little adventurous yeah. but but I really like their tea I always get a little, little oh, tea uh, you know on this yeah. rainy day isn't this such like a romantic restaurant at the same yeah, time yeah. oh my god I'm nervous <laughs> excuse me all right I feel like I'm on a scantron <laughs> Okay, so I have shrimp, scallion pancakes. I mean, could you do vegetarian dumplings too? How do you feel about Times Square? Because that's kind of like a controversial. It's a controversial subject. Like, did I vomit in an Olive Garden bathroom in Times Square? Yes. Yes. Do I take it back? No. Especially since I was in this like, we went there. It was kind of an ironic moment. Like we were like, you know, let's go to Olive Garden. So we were like really dressed up, and then it was for my friend's birthday. Did I think my knees would touch the Olive Garden floor? No, but I'm sorry, I cannot stop when there's unlimited breadsticks. My body gave up on me, but I didn't give up on Olive Garden. I did not give up on Olive Garden. Yeah, can we get a pot of jasmine? Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, thanks. When you like the food way too hot, and you do that, like, like, and then it still burn your whole throat, and you're like. <laughs> I don't even know if I ever tried those. Mm. They're really good. They're just full of uh, lotus piece. Lotus piece? Mm -hmm. Lotus. That sounds like a yoga studio. Lotus piece? <laughs> lotus piece. Oh. <laughs> hey guys, um, today we're gonna find our inner chakra. <laughs> if I had to pick one thing to recommend to the world from Namwa. Oh, hell yeah. Thank you. You know what, I couldn't just pick one. We say, give us a bigger booth. <laughs> okay, well. I'm Tiffany Barra. Um, I'm originally from New Orleans. We say Zakamo Finane Jambalaya. <laughs> Models that eat. Everyone Google jambalaya. You don't know what jambalaya is? TV, I'm gonna make you some jambalaya. I moved here when I was 18 to go to college. We love a Pace University moment, but you know, I never really came here for the college. I came here for music, so you know, I was out bopping my head, bopping to the beat. You know, we were just like, no. Hey. I'm actually a cover artist of only Missy Elliott. I grew up singing jazz and then I um, I pulled up on that like pop vibe so I was just like, uh-huh. <laughs> like I'm, I still want to get one of those mini earpieces that I can just be like, hello. Literally. So I've been making music for four years. I performed at most places in New York and then one night I was out with my pigtails and so like a little leather skirt vibing. You know, should have been at school studying, but we did. And I ran into my agent who was like, hey, are you signed? And I was like, who is this? Is he just trying to hit on me? You know, you know, it would always be like that when you're at the club and you see someone coming up, you're like, can't talk. Sorry, don't have a phone, don't have an Instagram, don't live here. I'm like super grateful to have had this opportunity, but I never chased it. So it's like a different perspective because a lot of people like, they've been wanting to be a model their whole life. So when you go for me, like, you know, I was a little, I wouldn't say grungy, but like, I'd go a few days without a shower, you know, we, we didn't shave our armpits all the time. We had our moment, we were trying to be this rock star lifestyle. I think the biggest change, there's two things. First thing was like having attention to detail, the things that I never thought of before, yeah. Split ends, y'all don't see them no more, maybe a few, but I used to have this long ass hair. It's been like actually really beautiful to be able to see like the power of being a curve model in today's like time. Because honestly, I never put myself in the box of a curve model. Like I never thought of myself as plus size. I'm just like, oh, I'm tip. Like, hey, I'll be wearing a size 10, but like I can steal your man's. You are working for like brands. So in a way you are marketing yourself in a different way than just being who you are. But it's also really important to keep that genuineness to yourself and like do 
what you want to do and what you feel is right for you, but while also understanding that like there is people that are looking for certain looks. So how can you merge these two things, keeping true to yourself while also being like adaptable to brands and like what they would like to? Because I'm still in my first year modeling. It's pretty tough. You learn that rejection makes you stronger for sure. You're not gonna always be everyone's look, but you gonna be someone's look. So keep going. You my look. <laughs> But I, I think the best thing that's changed is like the community that I've built. The body positive community and like with Christiana and the real catwalk I did that like um, yes. and spoke and I met such amazing people. I feel like I'm doing something of purpose for myself because I like was really bullied a lot as a kid for my size. Not even a kid like shout out to people in high school. I see you. Hey look. It's Big Tiff. Y'all remember that? And I'm still eating period. If there's anything that I can do to make someone feel better growing up, that's my goal. Societally, like, we're shifting and I'm really excited. And just like, if anyone can do a small part in like making someone feel more beautiful, like, why not? Hearing other people's stories has made me see the value in modeling because you are the face of what people see. You have the power to let someone feel beautiful just by looking at your work. I want to speak out more about like what it's like to be plus size or curve and find yourself in a sexual light. You know, how do you present yourself in a sexual light coming from like, and not that everyone has, but personally for me, coming from the trauma of like being belittled for your looks and like being made fun of, like how do you find your sexuality? Like how do you find your sensuality in, in the way that's like, how do you present yourself to people, you know, and get over these like insecurities and like be like, hey, I'm so fucking hot. I know you want me, but oh. <laughs> being sexual without limiting yourself to your size, you know, letting myself talk about my own vulnerabilities, which I have been so scared to before because I spent my whole life trying. I mean, I've been confident, but I've always like, I had an ideal of beauty that like I thought I wanted to be. Like, girl, you saw me in the body cons. Like, I'd be like tucking and, you know, and like just recently after getting signed like I've posted some really raw photos of like my roles and stuff which I would never oh, you know what? I'm not gonna lie two years ago I had the skinny app like you know what I'm saying and just to be able to like in that dialogue with myself and like be like this is it take it or leave it I think that's what I've grown the most from model or not model like you're more than your size but you're also should feel comfortable at any size you know so let's start out from the top like the only label that I associated with my body and as a young adult I mean prior I mean just recently I still work on it was fat you know that was the label that was thrown at me constantly like oh she has a pretty face but she's fat oh I would never fuck her because she's fat and, and this is from five years old to to now, you know, I, I think I got called fat a couple days ago and I'm like, be more creative. <laughs> like, like, yes, I like to eat, sue me. I think not limiting yourself to these labels as a fat or as curve, it's like, if someone calls you fat, okay, kiss my fat ass, Tyra Banks, CC, like, you know? But you know what I'm saying is like, taking these labels and destroying them or assimilating them into a new form of what you want. And I really think that's important. So if I'm curved, that's fine. Say what you want, but at the end of the day, I'm Tiffany. You know, like, Tiffany. You, can, you could call me fat, curved, skinny, pretty, ugly, short, tall, bada name. bing bum. I'm still be me. Call me by my name. <laughs> hey, Timothy Chalet, thank you. <laughs> so when I post sexy pictures, even if I'm not hot to everyone, that's me owning myself. And that's me putting myself in the sphere to say, I don't care. I'm gonna feel hot. Even if I don't always feel hot, I'm gonna show myself in hot personas because I think in a way that's like, I'm not gonna be scared to to be the person I wanna be even if I'm not all the way there yet, you know? So me and lingerie, if I have roles, it's me reclaiming the like space and saying, that's okay. There's someone that believes in you. And like, to me, like my agents have like, instilled in me their belief. Again, when you're facing so much rejection, it's easy to put that on you and say like, oh, I'm nothing, I'm too ugly, I'm too big, I'm too this. But that self-talk is what's gonna actually like, you know, make you horribly depressed, but then also cancel your career. Because you gotta remember the people that are like rooting for you, like, we're rooting for you, sweetie. You have to just like surround yourself by people that like genuinely have your best interest at heart. And I'm friends with a lot of models and non-models, but at the same time, like, that shouldn't matter because I'm not different in either way. You know, Tiffany the model is not different than Tiffany, Tiffany singer, songwriter, model. Put everything you want, but 
I'm just a big old walking potato. <laughs> My favorite thing growing up, I used to always like call people like, what's up, dill pickle head? Dill pickle head? Here is that. Snooky be like, I'm hungry. <laughs> Oh my god, I've been watching too much Jersey Shore. No, you know, Polly D was my first celebrity sighting in New York. It was 2012, the ball was dropping. I was wearing my Ugg boots, and Jason Chance was singing. I was saying at the Times Square, you remember Jason Chance? Grayson Chance? You remember him? He, like the off-brand Justin Bieber back in the day? He was Walmart brand. He was cute. Someone, if anyone knows where Grayson Chance went, also, Grayson, can you just comment? Like, I loved you back then. No, Polly D walks in. We're at the Millennial Hotel. I, I, it's like yesterday. Here I was in this like Ugg boot. I think I had like an iHeart NYC shirt on and a bump it. I loved bump it. Oh girl, I got a. Oh, I had every size. I got the combo pack. You know, you you, you ordered it from TV. You're like 1-800, like they'd be like, bump it. I screamed when I saw him in security, had to come and stop me. Cause they were like, you know, sensitive. I guess Polly D has a lot of like crazy fans. You know, one girl from my college slept with Vinny. Vinny, he on that keto too, you know? Oh my God, hey Vinny. <laughs> Welcome to Model Study. <laughs> my, um, my brand's been threatened, you know? I've never turned the camera to me, it's kind of weird. Um, how do you, don't ask me. My next question, perfect as you might the spring roll. What's your relationship with food like? So food's always been a really important part of my life because I'm from New Orleans, you know. New Orleans is all about food and it's all about the love you put in food. We have such a food-centric culture to where you can't find certain foods in New Orleans that you can, like anywhere else in the world. There's certain occasions too, like when the summertime, something for the summertime, we, we all have our crawfish out, we have crawfish boils. And then for like Mardi Gras, which is coming up like next week, we say, throw me some beads. Yeah, I'm, I don't miss Mardi Gras for nothing. Mm -mm. Hello, catch me on my spirit airline. No, just kidding. We're on Delta. So we have like king cakes and we have a lot of specific foods and then Zaps chips. Oh, but you know, I'm a jambalaya hoe. Like, I love me some jambalaya. Mm -hmm. Gumbo. Mm -hmm. As being an overweight kid, I had to really check myself because I love to eat. So I was like, I love to eat. And I always will. But I, I wasn't eating as healthy as I should have been because, you know, everything's fried. Like, sorry if I want to fuck up a bucket of chicken. When I was about 11 or 12, I had um, a gallbladder issue, which comes from just eating like too much fried food, or at least in my case. So the doctor was like, hey boo, like, let's throw in a veggie. Like, Broccoli. <laughs> like, and I was like, all right, fine, I'm gonna turn it into a veggie stick. That also came from like being made fun of and stuff. It, it just got to a personal point where I was like, I wanna change my life. I've always been really like athletic. I like gymnastics. Being the biggest girl at that time, like on the gymnastics team, they were like, oh, you're too big for the bar. And I was like, watch me. Did it, did it crack a little bit? That's not my problem, but I got up on there. <laughs> and so to this day, I'm always the biggest girl in my workout classes. And I'm just like, don't drop that thug. <laughs> But I love that because I used to be insecure about going to like Soul Cycles. Being that that point of change is so important. So now even if I do feel insecure, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna work out twice as hard as I know I can because I just need to prove this, not just for me, but for every like girl that feels the way I do when you're in those classes, because it's very intimidating. And that's why I love some really hot yoga pants. Like I'll be like, hey Lulu, hey Lulu. When you see someone living their truth or living the identity that they adhere to, it's completely scary if you're not doing the same. Rather than like eliminating that self-hatred on themselves and becoming what they want to be, they just lash it out on the other, you know, or the person that's in their view. What is it to be in your truth? And how scary it is because people will throw hate constantly. There's nothing scarier than that to them because they've been living in this like limit, this box. So when you see someone living their true self, you're gonna want to hate it because you can't be it. And that's in layman turn, yeah, but like, I've been <laughs> me, because you can't be. Four years of philosophy be like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, I, I have to tell you something. Two nights ago, I may have had two dirty vodka martinis, and it was like 1 a.m. And I sent a text out to my old professor. He is so fucking hot. Like he was my old philosophy professor. Like I worked on my thesis with him. I was like, hey, um, I know it's pretty late, but I'm still working on my thesis. Would you want to get together and get a coffee? Keep in mind, I graduated a year ago. <laughs> what? <laughs> 
He did not respond, but if you're watching this, the philosophers that are dead like helped me learn, but the ones that were alive helped me thrive. Oh my god, Katy Perry says, in another life. <laughs> wow. You know, I think that might have been the first song I learned on guitar. Are you no. guitar? It, not well. No, I just like like holding it and like being like, um, oh, so with food. I got healthy. I, I learned about health. I lost like 30 pounds, girl. Wow. But I maybe 13, 14. That's really young to go through a weight loss like Like that. drastic, yeah. like that. But again, it was because of my gallbladder. I just couldn't eat fried food anymore. I couldn't eat high fat content. So I just was like on a strict like lean meats and veggies. I found my love for whipped cream because it has no carbs, no sugar. Have you ever seen me being like, oh. But then I worked out all the time. So that's something that stayed with me. So I've learned, I've been on some crazy diets. I've done keto, I've done Atkins. Are they sustainable? Absolutely fucking not. Cause you can catch my ass, gained it all that way back. Eating bad foods can mentally be a coping mechanism, which it was for me a lot of the times. It still is, like if I have a bad day, catch me with my ice cream, which is fine, you know, it's totally fine. But when you like start to continuously, like if, if I go through like a depression or something, I, I find myself eating more you know, and more things that are like, you know, come for food. The fact is like being able to have a community of people, models, non-models, just having this dialogue and understanding that like, you're not who you were prior with any of your stages of like eating disorders or where you were being health or like, there's so much room for growth. The only way to go about that is like forgiving yourself and like letting yourself, you know, make mistakes with your food. I have days if I just eat like shit, I get like really caught up in like this whole mentality and it, it goes, I get dark quick. We'd be like, damn, put the lights I know, literally, <laughs> someone help. That can really like tear you down and wither you away, your spirit, your identity, everything about you, just by what you like weigh. So I don't, I don't have a scale. I don't want I one. Don't have a scale when I go to the doctor, I shut my eyes. It's just about you and what you feel good at. That's the beautiful thing about modeling. There's so many ups and downs and there's like, the best moments, but the low moments is what you learn from at the same time. I work hard at modeling and I've learned a lot and I'm still learning and I'm putting my ass out there every damn day. Take it or leave it. I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna be at the casting. But after that, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go write a song or I'm gonna go sew. Don't forget what makes you an individual. Yeah, like don't forget what, what brings you joy. And if modeling brings you joy, which it brings me joy too, you gotta understand that that joy comes from you and not the casting director, not, you know, anything outside. So as long as it's coming from you, but always get a hobby. Girl, you need a hobby. You need a hobby. I think people have this like glamorous idea of what being a model is, and it's very glamorous when you're on set, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's very glamorous when you get in book. Yeah. But for every win, there's at least 10 losses. And everyone says like, we out here for the kids, but like I genuinely mean that like, not just the kids, not just any, that that's passion. Yes, that that's passion. passion. That's me and my community catching me <laughs> when I fall. <laughs> Which is often. But <laughs> Before even I was a model, it was always my dream to like create a safe space for people that get bullied for their size and like educate people about health and like, you know, have like counselors on site because even at the time, like, so many people just told me, like, just lose weight, you know? Or people are just, like, dressed differently. Because you know what? I've been a hoe since I was born. And I, I love to show it. I love to show my skin. I love it. That's how I feel hot. And I did back in the day. Abercrombie, their XL was literally a size zero, but you caught me in a crop top. <laughs> you know, with the collar and the, the yeah, mousse. I was, it was a lime green one. And my teacher would be like, why are you wearing that? That's not your size. I'm like... Yes, it is, bitch. Now it is. Now it is. I made it mine. It's a crop. It's a hard thing when you're our age, knowing that this is like the time of our lives, but then also like, there's like a whole ass future going on and we gotta be prepared. This is the time where we're developing our voice because we're young models and like, I just, I'm so lucky to like learn under so many people and then just like, I hope it to, to do that's impact in some way. We learning. <laughs> he text my professor again. I'm learning. Thank you for having me. My last words are: fuck it, be fat, be you. Reclaim those words that made you feel small, and keep going out there every day, no matter what obstacles are in your way. Mwah. Love tip, stay hot, stay cool, stay sexy. <laughs>
I'm just doing this to distract Phoebe so I can grab my wallet. <laughs> Hi guys! <laughs> Today we're gonna be doing this beautiful look. Um, I'm using a Chanel, I would say peach gloss. So you just dab it, just like a little bit, like this, like just dab it, just a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Perfect. You know you put mm, a little more. What do you think? You know Valentine's Day is tomorrow. Make sure you're glossed. You know you put. Oh my God! There's a fight. Damn. Welcome to New York, girls. You never know what you're gonna see at the restaurant. Models that eat. Anyway. You know what? That's why I love New York. Because people express their emotion. Valentine's Day gonna be tomorrow. Any special ones in your life? You know you put the right amount of gloss if it just gets a cute amount on the cup. There was a fight and I filmed it. It was high. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I was just talking about lip gloss, and then all of a sudden I'm like, ooh. Goodbye now. 